agreement, but what he personally brought to it. So, Jim, I wanted to thank you for going the extra mile to make this agreement possible and all the work you're doing to keep it moving forward. So 2013 is off to a great start. Uh, we have been busy nonstop, uh, and we have a lot of exciting things coming up. Uh, so I wanted to just give you a, a quick sense, um, not only for your information, but if you're interested in, in being involved in any of these things, please let us know. Everything we do is open for anyone to participate and, and partner with. Um, among the expected achievements that, were, uh, that are already in motion um, are the official induction of two new members, cities, um, Zapopan slash, slash Guadalajara, Mexico, um, which is scheduled for the end of next month, um, where we will not only do an official signing ceremony with the mayor uh, and the university, but we will also use that opportunity to officially launch, um, which I'll come back to in a minute, the, the report, the first report of WCCP in Mexico. Um, following month in March, um, we'll be doing the same type of ceremony um, and launch of the report. Uh, or release of the report with uh, our, our sister city, or yeah, sister city Vancouver. Um, and uh, coming back to the report, I'm very proud of the work that Dan and our international partners have put in to, to produce a talent, uh, we call it the Talent Magnets Report. It's a, a look at talent attraction and retention strategies in cities. Um, it's a series of case studies, so I don't even like calling it a report. I think a report sounds too dull and drab. But uh, it's a series of case studies that is, are meant to inspire uh, public officials to look at new ways of, of tackling some of the shared challenges we have around these issues. Um, we're, we're somewhat on hold, at least for the next uh, couple days, with another partnership that I'm very, very excited about. Um, and that is an official partnership with the U.S. State Department. Uh, unfortunately, it is on hold as the State Department is going through uh, what I hope to be a very quick transition process, and we'll be able to finalize this on the other end. But um, World Class Cities Partnership has, has been identified as a key strategic partner for the State Department in developing sub-national relationships around the world. It was part of Secretary Clinton's vision that um, if the conversation was kept at her level, and, and that level of her counterparts and uh, world leaders, that it never quite got beyond the big issues of trade and security. Um, but that there was so much to learn, as we fully believe in World Class Aid Partnership, from subnational relationships. So she created the Office of Global Intergovernmental Affairs. <coughs> and we're, we'll be partnering with them um, hopefully soon, and we'll, uh, for two purposes. One is to build, or three purposes, one is to build ongoing relationships that we can support on a day-to-day -day basis that the State Department does not have the resources to support um, globally. Um, the second is to host an annual event where we bring the mayors of our partner cities to the U.S. State Department um, and give an opportunity for uh, mayors around the country to learn from uh, what they're experiencing in their cities and some of the opportunities that are available to all of us. And then the third thing is um, leveraging the State Department's network to help us continue to expand. Um, our very first city that we have already identified is Porto Alegre in Brazil, uh, which is actually the home of participatory budgeting, or the birthplace of participatory budgeting. Um, we're also looking at expanding into such places in, into the future um, as South Africa, India, China, Japan, and Russia. So with the, with the State Department as our key partner on that, um, really the world has now become an, an opportunity for us. And it's something we're very fortunate to have and I think really raises the profile of World Class Cities Partnership uh, locally but also on an international scale. Um, we are about to finalize, we've already gotten to work with the State Department. And actually I was down there for a meeting about this partnership that I just talked about when somebody walked into the office from Secretary Clinton's uh, staff and uh, was asking the uh, Special Representative for Global Intergovernmental Affairs if she knew anybody in Massachusetts uh, that could help her with something. <laughs> uh, so everybody in the room just kind of turned and looked at me. Um, 
<laughs> so it was, it was fortuitous. But the reason she was there is the island uh, nation of St. Vincent was looking at, um, look, looking for a sister island uh, to build partnership um, and cooperation between two islands, itself and another island, to look at such challenges that they face around um, fire departments. They have two fire departments, so two fire stations in the entire island of St. Vincent. They happen to be located practically next door to each other, which leaves the whole rest of the island exposed to the threat of fire. Uh, and more, more often than not, um, and fire that occurs on the other side of the island has at least destroyed the building it started in, if not an entire neighborhood, before anybody in the volunteer fire department, which doubles as the police force, um, is able to get there and help. So they're looking at, at better managing this system and turning to Martha's Vineyard uh, as, a, as a partner in doing that. So it's something I'm very excited about. Um, we will also, we're also working in partnership with um, U.S. Ambassador Alan Cass, uh, the ambassador to Portugal, um, on doing a joint delegation um, of Portuguese business leaders coming to Massachusetts um, in, Mar uh, in May um, to, to bring business opportunities and jobs uh, to Massachusetts. In March, uh, we will be hosting the mayor of Barcelona here in Boston to share some of what we're doing in our region with him and to also build on the partnership agreement and the cooperation agreement that was signed by President Moss and, and uh, Governor Patrick. And uh, on a personal story, um, for those of you who don't know, I, before working at Northeastern, I was a student at Northeastern and was given an opportunity to work and study in, in Ireland. I, I took classes at the Institute of Public Administration and was able to work in the parliament with John Bruton, the former prime minister of Ireland. Uh, at that time, I shared an office with someone named Mark Kelly, and uh, he is now chief of staff to the prime minister of Ireland. And the gentleman across the hall from us who helped me plan my family's entire visit to Ireland, because he was the former minister of tourism, not a bad help, helper in that endeavor, uh, he, Enda, is now the Prime Minister of Ireland. Um, so it's a great opportunity for us um, to explore many opportunities uh, between Massachusetts and Ireland. So I'm announcing tonight that we, will, we have already begun planning um, our next trip, our next policy exchange mission to Dublin. Uh, we'll also, we're also considering going to uh, Belfast in Derry, slash Londonderry, uh, but tomorrow we'll be hosting a session during the unconference to get your thoughts on what are some of the programs that you'd most like to, to learn about. Uh, so I, anybody who's interested in, in attending um, that session tomorrow or being a delegate for a delegation in the fall, uh, please, please do so. Please join that group tomorrow and add your voice to the discussion. <coughs> and uh, I'm very pleased to announce something that um, most nobody really knows, is that this morning I was able to talk to Prime Minister Kenny and, and, and Mark um, about this trip. So we will have the opportunity to meet with them while we're over there. And um, we're, next week we'll be choosing dates to make sure it's coordinated with his calendar. Um, but I, I mentioned to him the work we did with, with Catalonia. In, in building this trade relationship with Massachusetts. And he was extremely excited and receptive to this idea. Um, so on the drive down here, I called Governor Patrick, um, who was kind enough to call right back and has given us the, the uh, authority or permission to um, explore a trade opportunities between Ireland and Massachusetts to further uh, build on the many, many bridges that exist uh, informally. But to make it formal and to make it uh, a, a real opportunity for Massachusetts uh, and Ireland alike. So I think it's going to be a fantastic opportunity, uh, a wonderful trip, and um, I, I look forward to hearing what everybody has to offer in, as we develop this, this mission. Um, now to talk more about the research agenda that we um, have already begun uh, for this year is Dan Spies, our research director. We have chosen the topic, along with all of our international partners, of co-creating sustainable cities. And uh, with that, Dan Spies. And I stand between you and cocktail hour, so I'll make this very fast. Uh, as Mike said, we are about to release our talent report, which was last year's research. 
And a year ago at this time, at this place, we actually didn't have a whole lot to report. Um, we were still trying to get our footing with the topic, and, and we got there. But I'm, I'm you know, very happy to report that this year we have a little more, we're a little further ahead of the game. And as Mike had also mentioned, at our annual meeting, we choose our research topic for the year. And all of our cities express a common concern. It's a very collaborative effort in choosing the topic. Um, this year, our, all of our cities said that generally, and it's been, it's been a trend, cities are doing more with less. So they're being asked to do more with less. There's less funding generally to do programs and, and, and uh, uh, other opportunities. Um, yet, there are more people living in cities than ever before in ever in history. Um, this can be a burden on city officials and on cities generally, but it can also be a resource and an opportunity. And the topic of co-creation was identified by our cities as perhaps, let's look at this as a way to harness the human capital in our cities that is only getting bigger. Um, and it's still a fairly new and emerging topic, so we, we were really hopeful to get ahead, of the, get ahead uh, and be a leading voice in this, in this topic. Um, I mean, generally, this is, public participation in cities generally has been, cities have been trying to get more people involved for, let's say, the past half century, uh, at least from an from a urban planning perspective. Um, prior to, say, the mid 20th century, decisions were made top down. Things like, say, early, uh, early uh, US highway construction, urban renewal, were very much top down decision making. Um, but since then, um, cities have been trying to get people involved in many more ways. But how is co-creation different? Uh, it really is more than just citizen input. It's citizen involvement in the, the, the creation and delivery of city services. Um, and there, the potential with uh, co-creation also lies in the scale and geography um, <coughs> changes from traditional public participation techniques, especially related to technology. You can get thousands of people involved with basically eliminating geography. Going to a public hearing, for example, doesn't necessarily have to exist anymore. Um, so we decided as a group that we were going to define co-creation and we're going to look at uh, uh, examples in all of our cities and around the world. Um, defining it has proven to be very, very difficult. There's a lot of anecdotal evidence out in the, the scholarly and practitioner world, but there's very little, um, there's very little concrete definitions. Um, so with our partner cities, with a couple of graduate students in our program uh, at Northeastern, the dean of the School of Public Policy, myself, Joshua Hurwitz, who's here with us this weekend. Uh, we have decided to, we identified common factors among scholars and practitioners. Um, generally, there's a response, it's a, it's a response to a need for public sector innovation. Um, there's diverse stakeholders. It's collaborative and multi-directional. Uh, it's systematic, all stakeholders involved throughout the process. Um, and it blurs the distinction between consumers and producers and flattens the hierarchy of, of decision making. Um, and provides value for all stakeholders. And frequently, but not always, involves technology. And most importantly for governments, it lowers costs and manages risks. Um, we looked at a range of co-creation techniques. Uh, mobile phone, phone apps are probably the most easily identifiable. Citizens Connect for Boston. You take a picture of a popular graffiti, goes right to Boston's Department of Public Works and it gets fixed. Um, but there's also crowdsourcing web-based issue-oriented town hall meetings, open data sources, structured games for gathering citizen uh, uh, ideas, and participatory democracy. Um, and what we've already found out is that there's very little consensus and very little evaluation. There's lots of you know, stories about, isn't this a cool thing? Isn't this a great thing? But we don't even know if it's effective. Um, and for all the good, there are potential downsides. Um, for example, um, there's possible inequitable solutions, especially with technology. Do all people have equal access, truly? Um, so we've set a definition. Our cities are evaluating our background research report, and they're all doing their own research on procreation at the mm -hmm. local level. And uh, we're looking forward to being at the forefront of this issue and releasing more information as we get it and releasing a full report in a few months. Thank you.
Well, it is right now six o'clock, so right on time we're going to conclude this first part of the weekend. Um, but as is the tradition of World Class Cities Partnership, um, I hope we've provided you some rich content and gave it, given you a sense of the context of which tomorrow's discussions will be built on. Um, we are going to now go back up to the main inn. As you enter the building, proceed to your left. Uh, we will be meeting for the cocktail hour. If you haven't already checked in, there is a packet waiting for you at the front desk. Um, so if you don't want to fully check in, at least grab your name tag so the rest of us know who you are. Um, and with that, we look forward to having some fun for the rest of the evening. Thank you so much.